Just weeks away from triggering Article 50 and officially commencing Brexit negotiations, Prime Minister Theresa May has scored a historic victory. This week, two by-elections occurred in England. In Stoke-on-Trent, Labour fended off a determined challenge from UKIP. But in Copeland, Labour lost the seat to Tory candidate Trudy Harrison. Now, what makes this by-election so historic, you ask? Well, this is the first time since 1982 that the governing party has gained a seat from the opposition in a by-election. In fact, if you dig a little deeper, you discover that this is the first time since World War II that a governing party has gained a seat in a by-election and overcome a margin of 6.5%, as Labor's retiring MP Jamie Reid had in the seat. Now, what this represents is a political gift to Theresa May as the Brexit trigger deadline fast approaches. Her political capital stocks have received a significant bounce and the victory itself is not where the good news ends for her leadership. See, Copeland and its predecessor Whitehaven has been in Labour's hands since 1935. Copeland, in short, is Labour's domain, which is what makes this historic victory even more sweet for May and her government. It also has added pressure on Labour's leader, Jeremy Corbyn, who is struggling to unite a party which is riddled with divisions over his leadership. After the party's defeat in Copeland, the Secretary-General of Unions and Trade Union labelled the defeat disastrous and called on Corbyn to take responsibility for it. Corbyn is struggling to shake the image of being nothing more than a political gift to May, as his far-left views are seen as too far from the political centre to enable Labour to win government in 2020's scheduled election. The defeat is sure to kick off more internal divisions amongst the opposition, meaning that not only has Copeland resulted in political capital for May, she won't have to use it anytime soon, as her opponents look set to continue to bicker amongst themselves. On her right flank, May can take comfort from UKIP's poor showing in Copeland. Her victory can and should be considered an endorsement of her hard Brexit agenda. Copeland voted to leave the EU in 2016 Brexit referendum, but instead of UKIP gaining ground since 2015's general election, its support has more than halved. This means that UKIP voters are becoming convinced of May's Brexit credentials, even though the Prime Minister herself campaigned for Britain to remain inside the European Union. While many see this victory as proof that May should call a general election now and substantially increase her parliamentary majority, this would be a complete and utter mistake. Napoleon Bonaparte once said that you should never interrupt your enemy if they're making a mistake. Calling an election and winning it decisively would result in Labour's free gift to May, the leadership of Jeremy Corbyn, coming to an end. She'd be wiser to let him stay there as long as possible and let her opposition fight battles within its own ranks. May should resist the urge to go to the polls and instead keep that card up her sleeve for when she really needs it. After Copeland, May has plenty of political capital at her disposal and she's going to need every ounce of it in the looming Brexit negotiations. Thanks for listening to Black Swan Politics.